This is an ABP Life podcast. Adoption, a practice that was pretty much prevalent among parents in earlier times, but after science, technology, and films mainstream some concepts like in vitro fertilizations, parents now opt for that. But do you people know that there are more than three crore orphan kids in this country? It's actually way more than the population of some countries like Australia and Sri Lanka, and it's really heartbreaking to know that out of these three crore orphans, only four thousand adoptions take place annually in this country. Now, I know and I understand that adopting a child is a very, very personal choice. We just can't criticize parents or couples who opt for scientific methods to conceive rather than adopting a child. But these poor children also deserve the love and care of a family, the warmth of a home, and for that, we have to reach out to more and more people and streamline the process for adoption. So, welcome to Clear Cut Only on ABP Life podcast. I'm your newsman Rudrashish, and today, let's talk about adoption in India. So, the Central Adoption Resource Authority under the Ministry of Women and Child Development is the designated nodal agency to coordinate the entire adoption process in India. CARA is also the designated central authority to deal with inter-country adoptions in accordance with the provisions of the Hague Convention on Inter-Country Adoption 1993, ratified by the Government of India in 2003. CARA primarily deals with the adoption of orphan abandoned and surrendered children through its associated or recognized adoption agencies now adoption in india is governed by the juvenile justice care and protection of children act 2015 according to the relevant guidelines the eligibility criteria for prospective adoptive parents are the following they should be physically mentally and emotionally stable financially capable and should not have any life threatening medical condition single female is eligible to adopt a child of any gender but a single male person is not eligible to adopt a girl child no child shall be given in adoption to a couple unless they have at least 2 years of stable marital relationship the age of prospective adoptive parents as on the date of registration shall be counted for deciding the eligibility of prospective adoptive parents to apply for children of different age groups The minimum age difference between the child and either of the prospective adoptive parents shall not be less than 25 years. Couples with 3 or more children shall not be considered for adoption except in certain conditions. Now let's talk about some numbers. As per the data available on the CARA website, a total of 31,439 children were adopted between 2013 to 14 and 2020 to 21 in India. This includes 27,276 in-country adoptions and 4,163 inter-country adoptions. 2015 to 16 accounted for the highest number of adoptions in the set period, while 2020 to 21 recorded the lowest number of adoptions in the country since 2013 to 14. Now, while the numbers were declining since 2018 to 19. The pandemic induced lockdown and restrictive measures may have further aggravated the situation. On average, about 3400 in-country adoptions and 520 inter-country adoptions took place annually in India during 2013 to 14 and 2020 to 21. The number of in-country adoptions was more than 3900 in 2013 to 14 and 2014 to 15. and dropped to 3142 in 2020 to 21 the trend in inter country adoptions has been fluctuating it increased from 340 in 2013 to 14 to 666 in 2015 to 16 and dropped to 394 in 2019 to 20 in 2020 to 21 417 inter country adoptions took place Now of the 27276 in country adoptions during 2013 to 14 and 2020 to 21 close to 6000 adoptions took place in Maharashtra Maharashtra alone accounted for nearly 22% of the in country adoptions during this period with an average of 746 adoptions annually Karnataka is next in line with more than 2000 in country adoptions with an annual average of 285 in country adoptions Tamil Nadu West Bengal 
उड़ीसा उत्तर प्रदेश मध्य प्रदेश आंध्र प्रदेश राजस्थान एंड केरला हैव अकाउंटेड फॉर मोर देन 1000 इन कंट्री एडॉप्शंस ईच इन द 8 ईयर पीरियड together the 10 states accounted for almost 72% of the the in country adoptions that took place in these eight years now the covid pandemic has severely roughed up the adoption process according to a lancet study published in july 2021 between 1st march 2020 and 31st april 2021 an estimated 11.34 lakh children experienced the death of primary caregivers globally including at least one parent or custodial grandparent the study estimated that as many as 1.19 lakh children in india lost their primary caregiver due to covid-19 india was estimated to have the third highest number of orphan children after mexico and brazil these children are boxed into a category of covid orphans and they face the risk of abandonment and exploitation of several kinds some of them may face a learning crisis a risk to survival and health risk of violence abuse and many others now if we talk about the causes of such a low adoption rate in india then one of the main reasons would be the whole adoption process the supreme court has emphasized that the adoption process in india should be streamlined because under the cara procedure there are 3 to 4 years of waiting period to adopt a single child the apex court has termed the whole process as very tedious and ask the authorities to streamline the process a bench of justices dy chandrachur as bopana and jb paridiwala told additional solicitor general km nataraj appearing for the center that there are a lot of young couples waiting to adopt the child but the process is so tedious that it takes 3 to 4 years to get a single child to be adopted through the cara can you imagine a 3 to 4 years period to adopt a child in india it should be made simpler there are lakhs and lakhs of orphan children waiting to be adopted now another big reason for low adoption rate in india is a chicken and egg situation most indians have a skewed perception of adoption as they want their genes blood and lineage in their child most indian parents also want a child between 0 and 2 years old because they believe the parent child bond is created during infancy they also have high apprehensions when it comes to adopting children with special needs and such children are adopted by foreign couples and now we have renowned lawyer and activist sunita ojha with us on the show today hello and welcome to clear cut ma'am it's a pleasure to have you on the show hello rudra sesh thank you for having me over on your podcast um this today's topic is really very close to my heart having worked with um uh, children uh, especially who are in um, both in conflict of law as well as children who need care and protection So my first question to you is can you walk us through the long tedious process of adoption in India um coming to your question on um the long process of adoption in India so let's just talk about the laws that exist with respect to adoption in India number 1 the uh, so called um the one is of course adoption is something which is um permitted under the personal law of Hindus and and it was uh, governed by the hama which is hindu adoption and maintenance act now with respect to other communities since adoption is not permitted under the uh, other personal laws whether it is muslim personal law or christian or parsi the only recourse was um, guardians in ward act 1890 under which the under the law you can get appointed as a guardian but uh, it as the word suggests guardian it ceases once the person attains majority or 20 21 years of age now in 2000 under the juvenile justice care and protection act a major change took place and that change was in terms of um, introducing process of adoption for children who are uh, abandoned who are surrendered and um, so that became the major mode of for actually people or couples wanting to adopt a child in fact i would say that as a, uh, adoption as a mode of becoming a parent uh, has emerged as a preferred choice if you look at uh, observe around yourself um, although i do not have any data to support it but um, it has come up as a big um, as a big choice for 
either single parents or single um, women or single male male person or the or the parents who cannot have child for their own um, medical or physiological reasons so the adoption has emerged as an uh, as a preferred choice in fact when the law today let's also look at the overall structure of adoption that we have so cara which is the central adoption agency is a nodal agency for uh, or carrying out a process of adoption right from stage a which is registration to the final stage when a final order is passed by the court and you become legally uh, you adopt a child so now the whole the process of cara was aimed at streamlining so even today you can go to their website and you can figure out the information is given in a very simple and lucid manner how do you register yourself how do you upload your documents how uh, adoption agencies will approach you conduct a home study uh, etc so that process of simplification has happened but there are challenges which i will come back to later what can be done to promote it further as in we need success stories we need people to speak about it uh, more openly uh, we need parents who have adopted children to share their experiences because there is also a lot of um, misgivings lot of um, apprehensions uh, relating to raising an adopted child which is if you actually talk to um, the parents who are raising it, who have children through adoption they can act, they can uh, break those myths uh so a, a sense of a sense of um what is called you know secrecy that people adopt or um, in and around this process of adoption that actually works against it so we need a system of more open communication where uh, the, both the challenges can be understood and addressed at the same time the, the adoption can be um promoted as a way for one on the one hand for a parents to have a child and on the other hand children to get a family uh, which will um, provide them a um, good environment for growth and uh, and future prospect so that is what i would say now adoption is a very personal choice we just can't force the masses to adopt so what do you think should be done to promote this practice in india in my point of view we have to understand that at the core of this entire system of adoption is the children so at every step it is the welfare of the children which is to be kept in mind and which is to be the guiding force for taking any decision or any um, making any plan so that is number 1 number 2 as i said the process so cara is the nodal agency cara is the agency which has all the data and collects data however the rest of the task is done by what is called you know adoption agencies like recognized adoption agencies at the state level district level etc now much of these agencies do not have adequate resources number 1 to carry out family um, survey to do a you know the analysis even to complete the process of uh, uh, going to the filing a petition in the court getting an order to complete the um, uh, the process of adoption so while they are there on paper and while they are doing their work but they are not really doing it great so one it takes time and uh, the quality of work suffers and it also creates lot of um i think you know dissatisfaction with the whole system so that needs to be up- upgraded the the society the adoption agencies need to be fully equipped in terms of uh, uh, conducting the role because under the scheme of act it is it's a very comprehensive role that has been given to the ssa so that is number 1 uh, both before the adoption is done and also after the children uh, are given um to the foster parents and then the petition has to be filed in the court so both these processes require um the agencies to be fully equipped in terms of 
uh, uh, professionals, qualified professionals to do this work. Now, the third number third is, you see the children who are either abandoned or surrendered, they are state's responsibility. So, while parents who want who want to become or who who choose to become parent through adoption are actually partaking in this entire um, uh, responsibility of the state so therefore they become an important stakeholder stakeholder but having said that the responsibility of the state does not go away so state cannot get out of this entire system state has to in fact play more effective and constructive role in ensuring that the children get a better home a better uh, a better environment to growth but at the same time the state also has to respond if there are any challenges faced by these children so it is it is a it is something that uh, requires um, a consultative and cooperative approach by all the stakeholders uh, so that um, the children can get a better future and in the in the in the in the in that sense can bring more happiness around the world can you tell me about the common fears people have while adopting a child regarding common fears that people have while adopting a child um see much of these fears emanates from the fact that this is an unknown territory people are not aware uh they so one of for the, like lot of time i as a lawyer get a lot of questions as in you know this is how we want to do can you help and then we always advise them that the process that you have to follow is the cara process you have to register yourself so um so the lack of proper information um is one of the major fears another is um, you know in recent past there has been lot of cases now so i'll take you back to when we said that how which are the children who are who are free for adoption <clears throat> so you have children who are um, surrendered who are children who are abandoned um, these children are then they, they by the child welfare committee they are declared as free for adoption now in many cases which are pending from right from kerala to um, you know up here in delhi you can, in the courts where the parents have shown up and there has been litigation so there is also a uncertainty in terms of what happens even if i go through the entire process of registration study and documentation and thereafter child comes and stays with me and if we face legal challenges so that is a major um a challenge um and i won't say it's very frequent but it is been happening and um, Uh, and and that's that's one area which needs to be addressed and which will have to be addressed from the bottom level when the children had been declared um, uh, free for adoption that is the time when the process has to be followed to the t to ensure um avoiding any future complications between the the parents of birth and the adoptive parents and my last question is what do adoption agencies look for in the parents they said that the process of adoption is streamlined through cara and cara has identified cara has agencies these are um, you can always um, you know these are agencies which will facilitate once you register yourself with cara then the role of the agency comes in you register with a particular agency and that is the agency recognized under cara and then they undertake the task of uh doing a family verification so study family study there is a there is a counselor who visits the family they look at the what is the status emotional psychological financial stability and the interplay of other dynamics within the family so that report tends to be very very um it's a lengthy it is um detailed and it is important to give a it is meant to give a complete uh picture of the family who wishes to um, adopt a child so therefore all these factors are very important um when 
the person's application is considered for adoption so basically what they are looking for that the child should be able to go to a a stable healthy and family which is capable of giving both love affection care and also should have the means economic means to take care of the child so that that's the end. the process is designed in such a way the form is complex form is um, detailed and to to collect these information to gather these informations for a better understanding of the family well it was an absolute delight talking to you on this pressing issue thank you so much for your time thank you so that's all the news and scoops i have for you today today's episode was produced by lalit this is your newsman rudrashish kanjilal signing off have a wonderful evening and keep listening to abp live podcasts